Ladies and gentlemen, you are not in Kansas anymore. You are on Pandora. They've sent us a message that they can take whatever they want. But we will send them a message that this, this is our land. Oh my god. That was so good. So sick. Wow. How did he like, like how do you imagine this? Like Pandora? Ugh. Like it wasn't it like completely original as well? Totally, like, totally. Like I've never seen this plot done anywhere else before. I know. And that main character, what is his name again? Jake. Jake, yeah. Oh yeah. He was really happy. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, but like it was just so cool because he was really like badass. Like he wasn't mean about it like he just he wanted to just do his job and then he just kind of got sucked in the whole world and then look at at the end he was he was like a big help yeah like, he and helped he him out a lot and he fell in love and like oh i love the riddle man perfect life <laughs> ideal so, like what was your favorite part oh i definitely made teary she was such a strong female yeah. character she just like she schooled him at the beginning about how he handled his like body and everything mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah and then it's just like it's like it just i love the whole romance story because it's very um universal you know like he fell in love with her they're a different species but like mm -hmm. it's but it still... all worked out in the end mm -hmm. yeah that was the best totally the best and when he conquered that like flying beast thing oh, yeah. what was that I don't, know what the, I don't know what it was called but yeah. it was pretty sick anyway yeah it was like the best he was so badass <laughs> he was amazing oh, so amazing <laughs> Excuse me, ladies, I'm sorry to interrupt your conversation, but I am the movie critic, and I challenge you to think more critically about the movie that you've just seen. Now, I realize that you were both dazzled by the nauseating special effects and otherworldly beauty of Pandora in the film Avatar, but we need to take a more critical look at the plot of this film. Critics have said that this film is unique and mesmerizing, and contains a whirlwind romance and revolutionary treatment of native white relations. Hundreds of years into the future, humans discover a valuable resource in a distant land. A grumpy commanding officer is greedy for it. A young soldier is tasked with the duty of getting close to the primitive locals in order to exploit and convince them to move from their sacred grounds. The young soldier, named Jake, falls in love with the daughter of the native chief, named Neytiri and, spoiler alert, switches sides to fight against the humans and save Pandora and the sacred grounds. On the surface, Avatar seems to represent native women in a fair way, reflecting empowerment and strength through Neytiri's position within the native society. Upon a further look, there are serious problems with this movie pretending to champion native women, as analysis of this movie turns up the recurrence of historic themes of exploitation and conquest. Ever thought about that before? Let's take a closer look. This is why we're here. Because this little gray rock sells for 20 million a kilo. Their village happens to be resting on the richest deposit and they need to relocate. Those savages are threatening our whole operation. We're on the brink of war and you're supposed to be finding a diplomatic solution. Behind the flashy graphics, the narrative plot of this movie reflects themes seen all too often in Western films of the past. Avatar is nothing more than Disney's Pocahontas in space, complete with white settlers and primitive natives. You see, a futuristic setting and an absence of John Wayne doesn't necessarily erase themes that have been historically repeated in times past. Thematically, Avatar is not revolutionary regarding its treatment of native white relations, and particularly the representation of native women and women that are affected by these relationships. Even today, we see films such as Dances with Wolves and Pocahontas pop up on our televisions and in our theaters. These are films that Edward Buscombe defines as liberal westerns by the way in which they attempt to portray natives and their cultures in a positive light. As film consumers, we must still be critically aware of the way that these relationships and gender power dynamics are depicted. Yes, we must even be critical of James Cameron's multi-million dollar masterpiece in all of its modern day splendor. Who are you? Pocahontas. 
Pocahontas. What? What did you say? My name is Pocahontas. I'm John Smith. Let's preface these specific representations of women in film by laying a historical foundation for white and native gender and power relationships in popular media by citing an example produced by Philip Deloria in his book, Indians in Unexpected Places. This book discusses and critiques the expectations of Indians and native cultures that we all have as a result of prevalent stereotypes in modernity. He also provides a historical example of how native femininity has been depicted in popular media, and in this case, opera performance. The opera in question focuses on the intrinsic struggle to maintain a relationship between a white man and a native woman. In Deloria's analysis of the opera, the consummation of this relationship can stand as a metaphor for the white man conquering a new and exotic land, manifest destiny style. This inherent power imbalance extends any previous analysis of the media's perpetuation of white supremacy to natives and makes it explicitly gendered. This narrative plays out within the opera Shanewis, in which a white man named Lionel and a native woman named Shanewis fall in love and are tragically parted by Lionel's eventual death. Philip Harjo, Lionel's murderer and depicted as a savage native, can serve as, observ as an observant audience and as a critic of the harmless romantic motif that is present in this opera and can be seen in countless films as well. This white male native female relationship, according to Deloria, as he examines the motivations of Harjo, can be summarized as follows. This liaison is the expectation that has driven our history. It means not simply innocence, romance, but white triumph and Indian dispossession made visible through the capture of future generations via the bodies of Indian women. Jake and Natiria's innocent romance doesn't quite seem so simple anymore, does it? Like the relationship shared by Shanewis and Lionel, there are some problematic messages being conveyed between the lines of this relationship within the narrative. James Cameron is clearly not immune to these historical tropes, not even in a film praised with being a modern masterpiece. If you kill him, you'll have to kill me too. Daughter, stand back. I won't! I love him, father. Look around you. This is where the path of hatred has brought us. In the book Gender, Nation, and Postcolonial Perspective, the authors wrote about the cultural importance of women in Native societies. The authors assert that Native women were the root of resistance when the Indigenous societies were faced with colonizers in real life. Funny, but this sentiment doesn't seem to translate into Hollywood movies. These movies often depict fierce male warriors resisting the white men in Native primitive ways. Avatar was praised for showing Neytiri and her mother in positions of power and strength in the film. Neytiri taught Jake about the wonders of Pandora and how to be successful in his, in his alien body. Neytiri's mother was a shaman figure for the Native society and held the power of knowledge in sacred rituals and transferring Jake from his human body to his alien one. As Paula Gunn Allen says in her anthology, women serve some of the most important roles in tribal identity. But of course, we don't see that in Hollywood films. The problem was that at the end of the day, Jake, the white conqueror, is still the one to save the native people from harm. The native women, despite their strength and character, are still dependent on the white man to save them. Sound familiar? Now's our chance! Fire! 
No. What? They let him go. They don't want to fight. It's a trick, don't you see? Fire! Fine, I'll settle this myself. No! John! So what does all of this academic stuff mean for modern viewers watching Avatar and similar movies? It means that as viewers and consumers, we need to carefully analyze the themes and historical stereotypes that permeate today's mass media. When we watch a film like Avatar, it's okay to enjoy the mystical special effects and thrilling plot, but we also need to be aware of underlying subtleties in characters and the native white relationships that still exist. You know, I never thought about it that way. Yeah, that's amazing that we miss all of that stuff. Yeah, like I feel like that's been in every single movie I've ever watched and yeah. I feel like I'm gonna have to pay attention next time. Yeah, like all that context and history and wow, just, that was amazing. Yeah. I feel like I learned so much, you know? Wow. You're telling me. Mm -hmm. I'll never look at things the same way again. Wanna go watch Avatar again? Yeah.